Human and animal pathogens can cause great damage both to the population and the economy. It's therefore important to develop methods of minimizing the risks of infection, particularly for epidemic or even pandemic diseases. There are two ways of combating viral disease, either through prevention or through treatment. Public health measures, such as the provision of clean water supplies and the proper treatment of sewage, are hugely important in reducing the incidence of many infectious diseases. An obvious way to prevent disease is to avoid contact with pathogens. Physical isolation measures, such as personal protective equipment or quarantine of suspected infected cases, can be of critical importance. But in densely populated areas, or when large numbers of people are involved, this is not always a simple task. Frequently, contact with a pathogenic virus cannot be avoided. Many viruses circulate continuously and widely and many infections can be asymptomatic, particularly in the early stages. When a disease is serious and life-threatening, vaccination becomes the most effective and cost-effective way of preventing diseases. But although vaccines can be very effective against stable viruses, some RNA viruses present very difficult targets because of their rate of genetic change. For many viruses, we don't have vaccines. And even if we have vaccines, many people are not vaccinated. We have excellent vaccines for hepatitis B. But once infected with hepatitis B, the vaccine is of no avail. And we need, in these cases, good drugs to treat the infection. We need uh, drugs to treat HIV, because we cannot protect people against HIV by vaccination. Unlike antibiotics, antiviral drugs have been developed recently. The very first antiviral drugs were introduced in the 1960s and 70s. This late start was due to a number of reasons. For one, vaccination is a very successful way of preventing viral diseases. Developing antivirals without adverse effects, on the other hand, is a rather expensive and often very difficult procedure. In the past, insufficient knowledge as well as lack of the required molecular techniques made it almost impossible. Recently, scientists have been gaining greater understanding of the structure and molecular biology of viruses, as well as the nature of their interaction with host cell proteins and structures. This understanding has hugely facilitated the discovery of new therapeutic drugs. It has widened the range of targeted viruses and phases of the process of infection, which can be attacked. The AIDS epidemic also promoted a boom in antiviral research, and since 1980, several effective antiviral agents have been developed against a limited number of viruses. The more traditional way of finding and developing antiviral drugs is by extensive drug screening. Thousands of chemical compounds are screened for their activity to inhibit a virus propagating in various cell culture-based assays. Today, this is an automated process done with robots and is referred to as cell-based high-throughput screening. One way of doing this is to use a dye that measures viability and proliferation of cells infected by a virus. This assay is then used to screen large compound libraries and see if a chemical can inhibit viral replication. Well, if we look at the compounds that we have today, most of the compounds have been actually discovered uh, initially in a high throughput screening. So uh, large compound libraries are being evaluated against the replication of a particular virus. The most modern approach in finding antiviral drugs is by designing molecules that will inhibit the function of a viral protein necessary for replication. 
First, the viral protein must be isolated, expressed and purified. Then the purified protein must be crystallized. If the crystallization of the protein is successful, high intensity X-ray diffraction from a synchrotron source is used to determine the protein structure. Knowledge of the electron density can provide scientists with a three-dimensional model of the protein at atomic resolution. This knowledge can enable the visualization of the protein's active domain and lead to a better understanding of its mechanism. Now molecules can be found or designed to fit into that specific domain of the viral protein and thus inhibit its function. This approach has proved successful several times. For example, HIV protease inhibitors and influenza neuraminidase inhibitors were discovered this way. When a compound that can inhibit the replication of a virus is found, the molecule can then be further optimized. The challenge here is to find molecules that can inhibit a virus but have no adverse effects on the host cell. So once a compound has been identified, it is important to know how this compound acts. One of the strategies is to select in the lab for resistant variants, resistant strains. Once you have obtained such resistant viruses, you have to genotype those uh, resistance variants and identify in which genes mutations accumulate. Then you know what the target is of the compound. Then you can start to study the interaction of the compound with the target. And at that stage, when you understand the interaction between the compound and the target, then you can start to optimize the compound for more efficient binding to that viral enzyme or viral protein. Every stage of the viral replication can be a potential target for antiviral drug development. The drug target process may occur in the phase before or during entry into the host cell. The release of viral nucleic acid or enzymes into the host cell. During replication and manufacture of virus components inside the host cell. Or during the release of progeny virus from the infected cell. Capsid binding drugs like placoneril prevent the attachment and entry of a virus into a cell. They have been developed for picornaviruses and especially for rhinoviruses. Vaccination against rhinovirus is impractical because of the many different serotypes. Parts of the structure of the picornavirus capsid are relatively well conserved among the rhinoviruses and enteroviruses. The pocket in the capsid structure, which is important in virus binding to the host cell, shows only subtle differences in structure. This information was used to design molecules which would bind inside the pocket of a wide range of viruses with high affinity. This inhibits the binding of virus to target cells and the release of viral RNA, thus blocking the infection process at a very early stage. Amantadine is an anti-flu drug and one of the oldest available. Influenza enters the cell by endocytosis. The endosome becomes progressively acidified and at the right pH, the viral HA protein mediates fusion of the viral envelope with the endosomal membrane. However, this fusion event alone does not cause viral uncoating. The ion channel M2 envelope protein opens in response to acidification and allows protons to enter the virion. As a result, the viral capsid, the matrix protein, dissociates from the ribonuclear protein core, releasing it into the cytoplasm. Amantadin inhibits the function of the M2 protein ion channel and thus makes uncoating impossible. Neuraminidase inhibitors can inhibit the release and spread of influenza viruses. 
On the surface of the cells that influenza particles target, and particularly on the cell's receptors, certain carbohydrates, called sialic acids, abound. During budding, the influenza virions are attached to those sialic acids on the cell surface, specifically through the HA spike protein. In order to be released, influenza virus codes for another surface protein, neuraminidase, or NA for short. NA has a cleaving function, basically cutting the sialic acid from the HA protein and releasing the virus. Inhibition of the NA function results in the virus particles remaining stuck to the cell membrane. Thus, further infection is prevented. The two neuraminidase inhibitors currently available are Sanamivir and Oseltamivir. So we have uh, a number of compounds active against a number of viruses, but we have so many other viruses that have other replication strategies and we don't have any compounds for these viruses. We don't have drugs to treat patients infected with those viruses. So we still have a long way to go. We still need to develop many uh, drugs to treat many viral infections. Different viruses have different replication strategies, but they also have similarities. The challenge for scientists is to find lead compounds with broad spectrum activity that can be active not only against one virus, but entire families of viruses. <laughs>